Good morning, boys and girls. Day two of Vacation Bible School. I hope you enjoyed everything yesterday, and today we're going to have more fun together. Jumbo! Hello! Remember that word? And do you remember the word for family? Jami! Jami! We are here together, getting ready to go to Ndabi Place and have our time together there with the singing. I hope you're ready and you're learning all the words of our songs. I'd like to review yesterday's memory verse with you. It was, He loved us and sent His Son to give His life, to pay for our sins. That's found in 1 John 4, verse 10. Oh, it's wonderful to remember Jesus loves us. We are saved. That was our phrase yesterday. Our key action point. Our key action point today is Jesus loves me. I am brave. We're going to talk about being strong and brave today. And our memory verse is be strong and brave. Do not be terrified. I will be with you you everywhere you go. Let's say that again. Be strong and brave. Do not be terrified. I will be with you everywhere you go. Joshua 1 verse 9. I like that. You know, sometimes things go wrong and we're afraid a little bit. Sometimes it's just a terrible storm in the night or people talking about a hurricane coming. But then we have to remember, if God is with us, who can be against us? Because whatever happens, he will help us through. There are sad things, even when we love Jesus, boys and girls. Sometimes a parent gets sick. Sometimes we get sick, and we have to go to the doctor, and we don't like it, and we're afraid. But Jesus is with us, and he helps us to be brave, and we make it through. He helps us no matter what. That's what we're going to talk about and sing about today. And it makes us have so much joy inside us when we remember we are never alone. Oh, my. That's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Let's sing this song, I've Got Joy. I love this song. Sometimes the world makes you want to cry, but Jesus is always by your side. Through the darkness night, he will be your light. And because of his great love, I've got joy on my lips, so I shout, shout, shout. Joy in my hands, gotta let it out. Joy in my feet, makes me jump around. That's the joy of knowing Jesus, I've got joy. Sometimes the world makes you want to cry, but Jesus is always by your side. Through the darkest night, he will be your light. And because of his great love, I've got a joy on my lips, so I shout, shout, shout. Joy in my hands, gotta let it out. Joy in my feet, makes me jump around. That's the joy of knowing Jesus, I've got joy. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. Joy on my lips, so I shout, shout, shout. Joy in my hands, gonna let it out. Joy in my feet, makes me jump around. That's the joy of knowing Jesus. I've got joy on my lips, so I shout, shout, shout. 
Joy in my hands, gotta let it out. Joy in my feet makes me jump around. That's the joy of knowing Jesus. I've got joy, joy of knowing Jesus. I've got joy, joy of knowing Jesus. I've got joy, joy of knowing Jesus. I've got joy. When the world is a jungle, you are by my side, and you will never let me go, your promises are mine. I will fear no lion, fear no lion. Cause in the darkness you are there You're the light that conquers fear Oh, oh, oh I will fear no creature, big or small Cause when you're with me I stand tall You lift me up above it all Oh, oh, oh Oh, 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 oh. I'll follow my king through the jungle Oh, oh Oh, oh, I'll follow him wherever he goes. Oh, 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 I'll follow my king through the jungle. Oh, 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 I'll follow him wherever he goes. When the world is a jungle, you are by my side. And you will never let me go Your promises are mine I will fear no lion, fear no light Cause in the darkness you are there You're the light that conquers fear Oh, oh, oh I will fear no creature, big or small Cause when you're with me, I stand tall You lift me up above it all Oh, oh, oh Oh, 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 oh I'll follow my king through the jungle Oh, 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 oh I'll follow him wherever he goes Oh, 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 oh I'll follow my king through the jungle Oh, oh Oh, oh, I'll follow him wherever he goes. Oh, the king, oh, the king is here. Turning sorrow into joy, he will dry all tears. Oh, the king, oh, the king has come. I can hear him calling me. And I will follow, follow my king through the jungle. Oh, 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 oh. I'll follow my king through the jungle. Oh, 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 oh. I'll follow him wherever he goes. Oh, 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 oh. I'll follow my king through the jungle. Oh, 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 oh. I'll follow him wherever he goes. Our key verse for today is be strong and brave. Do not be terrified. I will be with you everywhere you go. That is found in Joshua 1 verse 9. Have you ever felt afraid? Maybe on your first day of school or when one of your teachers asked you a question in front of the whole class? 
Well, God is always there for us. Anytime we are afraid, we are his children and there's no fear we can't face and nothing we cannot overcome when God is with us. Remember the trackers from yesterday? Every day we are going to follow them a little further on their journey as they look for water and discover amazing things about God. There are the drums again. I wonder how Adisa and Katlaho are doing on their journey to find water. Let's see. Katlaho, we have been tracking animals for a day now and we still haven't found any water. And our own water supply is exhausted. What are we going to do? Maybe we should think, think like a wildebeest. I don't think that's a good idea. They aren't very smart. OK, well, maybe we could act like a bear. I learned that they can sleep for months until there's more food and there's more water. I don't think that that will work either. We can't wait three months. Our village needs us now. We need to find water for them. I know. Let's look and see what we have in our bag. That's a great idea. What do you have? Adissa? Hold on. I'm thinking. You, you know? We knew our journey was going to be a difficult one. Discouragement was something I was expecting. Adissa! I still believe that if we follow the right tracks, we will be led to water. Kathleho, when you talk so loudly, it's hard for me to think. Kathleho, you are sinking in quicksand. I know. That's what I've been trying to tell you. I need your help. I don't know what to do. Oh my, I think I'm going to faint. Can you faint later? I know you can be really brave. Remember that time when that child got stuck in a tree and you climbed up and helped them get down? Or the time when there was a snake in the chief's hut and you were brave enough to bring it out safely? You are right, Kathleho. Even when I'm scared, I can still do the right thing. Let me go look for something that I can use to rescue you. OK, but don't take too long. I'll just be here waiting for you. I'll just be here, ready whenever you come back. With God's help, we can be brave, just like Adisa and Katleho. If God is for us, no one can stand against us. Now it's time to have fun together today. Welcome back to the prayer station. I'm going to show you something really cool today. In your kit, you will find a sandwich bag, you'll find a sharp pencil, and before we use the water, I want to make sure mom is close by and she is aware of what you're going to do. So we are going to take water, and we're going to pour it in our sandwich bag as close to the top as we can without spilling it because we have to seal it. Make sure we get rid of as much air as possible. I think I need just a little more water. So you're going to get rid of your air and then start to seal it all the way across and make sure it's sealed. Okay, then you're going to hold your bag tight. Take your pencil and it needs to make sure you have a sharp pencil. And you're going to press the pencil right through the bag. The object is for it not to leak. Wow, wasn't that really cool? The pencil represents things that make us scared. 
And the water represents our strength. With God's help, we can face anything. Okay, our next activity, you're going to pull out your journals. And we're going to talk about communication. What do you do when you're really excited and you need to tell a friend something that's happened? And you just don't know, am I going to pick up the phone? Am I going to run down the street? Just think about, what if they say, you've got to make an appointment? Or they need an invitation. How does that feel? It doesn't feel good, does it? Just remember, we don't need an invitation when we talk to God. He's ready at any point. We can talk to Him. And what it means when we talk to God? Prayer. That's what the prayer station is all about. Let's ask God to help us be brave and give us courage to do the right thing. But always know He will love us even if it's the wrong thing. Okay, now we're going to go to prayer, so just put your journal down for a moment. And we're getting into position, fold our hands, bow our heads, close our eyes. Dear Jesus, thank you for listening any time that we need you. Thank you for helping us to be brave and giving us courage to do the right thing. And also, Jesus, thank you for always being there, no matter what, but even when we have done something wrong. Go with us now, Jesus, as we prepare to go through our day. Amen. Okay, pick your journals back up. And as we did yesterday... We're going to pick a page in the journal, it would be day two, and we're going to take a pencil and we're going to write down our action point for day two. Jesus loves me, I am brave. See you tomorrow. Good morning. Today we are talking about zebras. Zebras are unique and God is awesome because their black and white stripes make them a, a unique animal in that their stripes are just like fingerprints because they are the only ones that have them. As I said, the zebras, you can tell them, are black and white, and they look like a horse or a donkey. They live in the grasslands of Africa, and they are in big groups, and they are very social animals, and they even groom each other. The zebra is on the endangered species list because of food and water is hard to find and unfortunately they are hunted by humans. A zebra sleeps standing up and you can tell their mood by the position of their ears. God is awesome in making the zebra and he loves all the animals as we should. Thank you for being with us today, and we'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Hi, boys and girls. Mr. Hoo-Ha here again with you. We're here to talk about another game for Vacation Bible School. And today we are at a place called Huntington Beach State Park. You see this fancy chair I'm sitting in? Right off next to my left, there's another chair just like it. There's a blue chair I'm sitting in and a pink chair for ladies to sit in next to me. But over on my right, there's a game. It's called Cornhole. Cornhole. 
and I'm going to show you that game, Cornhole, and then I'm going to find the game Cornhole in my sack with my paper airplanes. So I'm going to take a walk now over to the Cornhole, okay? I'm going right now. Okay, boys and girls, we are now at the Cornhole game. The Cornhole game, no one knows where it was developed or invented. Some think the Orient, some think Germany, some think the United States. It's a game, two game boards, one here, and one 27 feet in front of me. And there are these little bags laying all over the place filled with corn kernels. Corn kernels. And what people do is they stand to the side of one of these wooden game pieces and they try and throw this bag of corn kernels into the hole on the other game piece. That's a long throw from here, and Mr. Moo is not really good at it, except it went right in the hole there. But now I can't put this game piece in your bag, but I have something almost as good in my bag. First thing in my bag is a horn hole poster board. See it? I'm going to put it down here on the ground. Mr. Moore is going to follow me. <laughs> but boys and girls, everyone in your bag has that piece of poster board. Three circles. Point five. 10, 15. Now, boys and girls, also in your bag, you have <laughs> you had a bunch of pieces of paper to make paper airplanes on our first activity. Now in your bag, each of you has two cornhole throwing devices. What you're going to do is stand however far you want from your poster board. And then you're going to try and throw it towards your poster board and have it land on one of those circles with a number in it. If you land it on a circle with a number, if, if your little cornhole bag is on any part of that circle, we're going to give you points for it, okay? So I'm going to try. You can do this with your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad, your grandma, grandpa, your neighbor, and have a good time with it. Are you ready, Mrs. Muha, to watch me? I am. All right, here we go, boys and girls. Ooh. One more time. All right, five points for Mr. Muha. All right, boys and girls. So for today, in everyone's bag, you have a piece of poster board marked somewhat like a corn pole cake. It has circles on it, and in each circle there's a point number. If your little cornhole throwing bag lands on a circle, then you get those points. The goal is to get as many points as possible. So this is in your bag. This big nice piece of poster board with the circles. Then you have two cornhole type throwing bags in your vacation bottle school bag also. So I hope you have a good time playing cornhole, the modified version, as I do and as a good time as I have playing the real cornhole game. Thank you and I look forward to seeing you another time with another game. Bye.
and girls, it's time for our Bible story again today. Oh my, seems like my chair got lower than yesterday. Whew, maybe I just got older than yesterday. Could be. I'm excited to tell you this Bible story today because there's this wonderful promise in our memory verse for today that wherever I go, Jesus is with me. He loves me. He helps me to be brave when it is necessary for my life. That's an exciting thing. Let's pray and ask Jesus to help us in our Bible story today. Dear Jesus, we thank you for learning yesterday how much you love us and that you gave your life for us and that you want us to believe and to love you back. Please help us to have a good time with this story today. Help us to understand that you truly are with us and that you will help us with whatever is going on in our lives. We are never without you. We love you, Jesus, and we thank you in your holy name. Amen. Have you ever thought you were just too little to do anything fun? Sometimes when you're a little kid, grown-ups are always saying, you can't do that, you're too young. You can't do that, you're too short, too small. And that's very, very discouraging. But Jesus doesn't say that about us because he knows exactly what we can do and he helps us to do it. Did you know that there is a whole book in the Bible about a little girl? A little girl who had lots of sad things happen in her life. Her name was Hadassah. And Hadassah's parents died. She had to go to live with her cousin in a faraway city, away from her friends and everyone that she knew. But you know, she was so glad to have a home to go to that she had great joy in her heart and she determined that she would do exactly what Cousin Mordecai told her to do. That was a good idea, wasn't it? It's a good idea to obey the grown-ups that we trust. And she did. Mordecai, I thought she was such a lovely child. He said, we're going to change your name to the name of the people here in my country. And instead of being Hadassah, the little Jewish girl, you're going to be Esther, the girl who lives here. And that means shining star because you're so happy all the time and you just have such a nice way about you. You're like my little shining star. I like that. I like the idea of being a shining star, don't you? Wow. I'll just tell you, by the way, that's what my name means too. That's cool. So in our Bible, there is the whole book of Esther. Esther, while she was living by Mordecai, she noticed that people really respected her cousin. He was a very good man. He wanted to do what God wanted him to do, and he wanted to be very respectful to the king of Persia, for whom he worked. He wanted to be kind to everyone. People see how we act, and they respect when we act appropriately. And Mordecai I tried very hard to do all the things that God wanted him to do. The king had a man who worked for him whose name was Haman. Haman was really not a good guy. In fact, he was quite a bad fellow. He had such an attitude and he just wanted everyone to think he was special. And actually, the king did. The king thought he was very special and he gave him a title. And he said that people should bow when Haman walked by. Well, Mordecai, I believed what it said in the Jewish Bible, our Bible, in the Old Testament, that we don't bow down to things, that we don't respect high level people to bow down like they're gods. It's different to be respectful, but to treat them like they are gods is not right. And so Mordecai would not bow to Haman, and Haman really hated him for that. He said, the king said people are so to bow down to me, and you are not bowing down. But Mordecai just did what he was supposed to do, 
and he did his job well. In fact, Mordecai was always listening. And one day, Mordecai heard rumors and a story and some facts about someone who wanted to kill the king. <gasps> right away, he sent someone to the king to say, Oh, king, someone wants to hurt you. We have to put a stop to it. And he saved the king's life. And in the book of records, the king had them write that Mordecai had saved his life by paying attention and doing the right things. Down in the history books forevermore, Mordecai's name. Oh, Haman didn't like that either. He just did not like Mordecai. So all of this was happening, and in this time, the king of Persia decided he needed a new wife. And Esther had grown up to be a beautiful woman. And she was so gracious and lovely, Mordecai said, I think you should go stand in the line and see if the king chooses you to be his queen. And so Esther did just what Mordecai I told her to do. She fixed her hair, and she put special creams on her face. She put on her best gown. She got her skin as beautiful with lotion as she could. And she went down there and stood in a line with hundreds of girls, all who wanted to become the queen. You see, the other queen had been very bad and was no longer there. So he was going to have a new lovely queen for himself. And when Esther went in before the king, the moment he saw her, he felt as though there was something special about her, and he chose her to be his wife. She got to go to a special house with lots of servants and get all fancied up. For a year of their engagement time, she was taught how to be a queen. Sometimes we have to learn how to do things, boys and girls. We don't always know exactly what is expected of us, and so we need to listen and learn. It was like going to school. Esther did very well. She learned all the rules of who to talk to, and how to get permission to go in before the king. She learned that there was a rule that if you go in before the king without permission, he can punish you, even put you to death if he doesn't hold out his scepter to welcome you. She learned all the rules, and so she became the wife of the king, and everything went very well until one day Haman was very mad at Mordecai. And he was trying to think of a way to get Mordecai in trouble. And the only thing he knew about Mordecai is he was a part of the Jewish community. And some people didn't like the Jewish people. That's not right. We never dislike someone because of where they're from or the color of their skin or the way they talk. That's not how God would have us be, is it? No, no, no. And yet, that's how Haman's evil thinking was. Maybe I can use that he is Jewish against him, and I can have the king punish him. In the meantime, Esther was being a very, very good wife to the king. And Mordecai was being a very, very good worker to the king. And one day, the king was thinking about what Mordecai had done. And he said, couldn't sleep, and he was thinking about that. And when Haman came in, he said, Haman, I was thinking, what do you think I should do to honor a man that I really like? Haman was so selfish, he thought the king was talking about him. His chest got all puffed up, and he said, oh, I would put your robe on him. I would put one of your crowns on him. I would put him on one of your best horses. And I would have him paraded all around town saying, this is the man the king loves. 
This is the man the king is proud of. That's what I would do, that selfish Haman said. And the king said, let's do that. You do that, Haman, for Mordecai. <coughs> Haman was so upset. For Mordecai, he did not want to do that. He was even more determined to get rid of Mordecai. And he did what the king told him, exactly what the king told him. He wasn't very happy about it, but he did. He also talked to the king and told the king that those Jewish people were doing horrible things and that he should designate a day and have them all put to death who were doing the wrong things and that he should do that because they were not loyal to the king. And the king, boys and girls, was deceived. And so the king of Persia made an order that on a certain day, all of the Jews would be killed in his kingdom. He did not know his beautiful wife, Esther, was a Jew. He did not know that. When the notice went out to all the villages and all the people, and Mordecai saw it, he went straight to the palace to send a message to Esther. Esther, Esther, your cousin Mordecai needs to talk to you. Please get to talk to him quickly. Of course Esther did. She loved cousin Mordecai. She respected him. She knew that he loved the Lord and that he would always want her to do the right thing. Mordecai said, Esther, you're a Jew. They'll kill you too if this notice is allowed to stand. You must ask the king not to let us all die. Not to let you die. <gasps> oh, Esther said, I don't know about that. I'm a little bit nervous about that. I'm not supposed to go into the king unless the king asks me. But if you think I should, I will. And so, she said, I will pray for three days and ask the Lord to help me, to show me how to do it. And then, I will go in. She went back to her maidservants, all of the people who worked with her in, there in her home in the castle. And she had them all pray with her for three days. And then she went in before the king. The king heard her coming. Who is that coming in here without permission? No one can come in here without permission. Oh, it's you, Esther. And he held the scepter out to her. And she walked up to it and touched it. She said the words that she had been taught, oh, King, live forever. And he said, what do you want? I love you so much, I'll give you half of the kingdom. If you want it, you can have it. And she said, I would like you to come to my house for supper. And I would like you to bring Haman with you, please. Oh, what else do you want? Anything, anything. And she said, well, for now. And so they went to her home, and she had a beautiful dinner for them. Haman felt like such a big shot. He was there with the king and the king's wife. He was just so lucky to be there. He felt so good about anything, and after they had eaten all the lovely food, the king of Persia said again to Esther, what is it you want, my dear? Anything, even half the kingdom. And she said, oh, I would like you to come again tomorrow night and have another nice meal with me and bring Haman too. And so they did. They went back and they had another lovely meal. And this time, when the king said, What is it you want, Esther? I'll give you anything you want, even half of my kingdom. Esther said, Okay, someone wants to kill me. <gasps> wow! 
what? Someone wants to kill my queen? No one can kill my queen. You see, I am a Jew. And there's this law that now has gone out to all the villages. And it says on a certain day, all of the Jews are to be killed. That means me too. Oh, the king could not believe it. What had happened? What had happened? Who said this? Who caused this to become a law? Who brought this before the king? What's going on? And Esther turned and looked at Haman and pointed at Haman and said, It was he, O oh king. It was Haman who did this. And so the king took care of business with Haman. None of the Jewish people died, but Haman did. Because he had sought to do evil, and he had meant to do harm to good people, he had done what was wrong, and that was the law in their land, that for that you do get put to death. And so Haman was the one punished on the gallows. There is a price for wrong, boys and girls, there is. But there's a glorious gift for doing what is right. Jesus wants us to be the ones who do what is right. He is the one that wants us to trust in his holy word and to know that he will be with us. And as Esther said, God is with me. If I perish when I go in before the king, I perish because I know I am doing what is right. Oh my, don't we want to be like that? Don't we want to know for sure that God is with us wherever we go and that we can stand up for what is right on the playground? We can stand up for what is right at school. We can be the one who is kind and helpful and stops the unkind words. God wants us, Jesus wants us to be the person who stands for him because we know he is with us always. Just as he was with Esther and helped Esther to do what is right, he is always with us and he will help us too to be brave and to stand exactly where we need to stand for the right in this old world. We love you and Jesus loves you and he wants us to remember that every day. Talk to you tomorrow. Hi, I'm Miss Sally, and welcome back to day two of Vacation Bible School. Now, today our verse is, Jesus loves me, I am brave, I am brave. And that's in Joshua 1, verse 9. And be strong and brave, do not be terrified, I will be with you wherever you go. And that's a very strong promise that the Lord gives each of us. So Jesus loves me, and I am brave, even in the jungle. So today, we're going to make safari logs. Doesn't that sound fun? You know, a safari is uh, when you get to go someplace, and uh, in Africa maybe, or, well, usually they're in Africa, and you go out with your camera, and you take pictures of lions and and elephants and zebras and whatever else you're fortunate enough to see. So today, we're going to make safari logs. Now, you've probably had ants on a log. These are safari logs. And we're going to use celery. Although you can use um, apple wedges. We uh, didn't have any green apples. So we're not using those, but that is an option. But we're going to use celery. And we're going to make two different ones today. So I'm going to take two pieces of celery. 
And I'm going to use peanut butter again. Now you do have that option of using a different kind of butter like almond butter, uh, they make sunflower butter, you can use hummus, you just need a filler. So those of you who have peanut allergies, uh, you know, just make sure you use something that's going to be safe for your diet. I am not allergic to peanut butter and I love it so we're going to use peanut butter. It's a little messy but that's half the fun. I'm going to go ahead and put it on this one as well. This is a really simple snack, but I think you'll really enjoy it. All right, we've got the peanut butter on it, and now we're going to take animal crackers. Now, this is a buffalo. I don't think they were... Build a beast. <laughs> they might not be real buffalo like we think of in America, but they have wildebeest, they have water buffalo. So I'm going to put my buffalo right here. Ooh, here's a tiger. That's going to be fun. He can be chasing my buffalo. And that might be all the room I have on this one. Now, you also have the option of using fruit for your safari. So I'm going to put this gorgeous raspberry right in the middle. And I'm going to put a blueberry on either side because not only is it going to be yummy, but I think it's pretty. And food should be pretty. So now we have, we have our safari logs. We have the animal crackers on this one. So we have, we're going on a lion hunt or we're going on a tiger hunt. And on this one, we have some delicious fruit. Now remember, you do have snacks in your bag that was picked up at church in the event that you didn't have these ingredients. But y'all enjoy. These are so good. Hello boys and girls, welcome to Tuesday's Crafts. Come on in. Did you have an exciting story? Good job. Let's all say our memory verse together. Jesus loves me. I am brave. Good job. That comes from be strong and brave. Do not be terrified. I will be with you everywhere you go. Joshua 1.9 Let's all say it again. Jesus loves me. I am brave. Yay. Now let's get to our craft. Are you excited? Good. In your bag, you'll find a little paper plate that's been cut. Pull that out and your yarns. Got it? Okay. Your plate's probably fat, flat. So push it in. Make a circle. To make it look like a bowl. And when we get done, this is what you're going to have. Isn't that beautiful? Take your piece of yarn, make a loop, and then tie it. And put it over one of your little paper plates legs. There you go. And then you're going to weave it in and out, in and out, until you get the color that you like on your bowl. We're going to do this several times around, in and out, pull your yarn out, and this is going to pull those little flaps up. That's right. There you go. Keep going. And you can change colors anytime you want. And I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Let's take this one more time around. So where we have it really purple on the bottom. I love purple. Oh, and something else I love is Esther. You're going to be learning about her later on with the story today and she's a big brave woman who stood up to a mean evil man and God helped her okay now let's go and change colors so we're going to take our scissors and just cut the purple let's add pink 
How many like pink? All my girls like pink, don't you? Okay, I love purple and pink. Okay, tie your knot on and let's go the way we were until we get that knot inside the bow. See how that's inside? And then we're going to go back the other direction to where pink is on the inside and outside of these that don't have it on the outside. Can you see how that works? See that? All right, and we'll just keep weaving the pink in and out like we did the purple. And it should be moving up a little bit on your bow. And if you want pink or purple the whole way through, you're gonna do two or three lines on this way and then turn it back over and do it the other way so that you catch all the little flaps to make it into a bowl, okay? Let's do this a little bit more and then we're gonna change colors again so you can get the grasp of how to change, okay? Maybe I'll go the other way with just pink. Let's try that. How's that? Okay, now we've got about four on there. So this time, we won't have a knot, but we're going to just switch around this one and go back the other way. Then that way you're going to have purple and pink on the outside. See that? That makes it pretty too. And you should have two or three colors in your bowl. And mix them and match them as often as you want. Until you get it all the way up and we'll show you how to finish it off. Okay, we're going to cut this pink one off now and get with our other purple. This one's a little short, but we're not going to do much because we're almost to the top. So if you run out, just go ahead and tie another color to it. It's okay. So then we're going to finish out, switch that in, and switch back around to the other way. There we go. Put the knot inside. There. Now, we've got the purple going over the pink again. There we go. Just weave it all the way to the top. And then, at the end of your yarn, you're going to take that inside and glue it. And you might even get under a knot and glue it there. Then I want you to bend down all these top little layers right there at the top. Make a little lip. Good. And then we're going to take our glue and glue those down. Just take your glue. If you got drop glue, that's good. If you have this glue, just rub it to the side right that way. And then hold it down. There you go. You'd be like me, you'll get glue on your fingers. And you'll stick to everything. There we go. That's what it's going to look like. You take this and put it beside your bed on your bedside table. And every evening put your chains, your marbles, your pencil erasers, anything you have in your pockets. Just put it right there and it'll be there in the morning. So there we have our bowls. And I hope you enjoy them. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Nissa, are you going to come back for me? Oh, no. I don't know where Odessa is. This Bible verse is found in John 16, 33. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage. I have come to, I have overcome the world. 
This verse says that even though we will face trials in this world, Jesus is stronger than anything, so we don't need to be afraid. Don't worry, Kathleho. I'm coming. I'm coming back. Just hold on a bit longer. It's all right, Adissa. I just read a Bible verse. That's good because I'm not finding anything that will work to help you. Okay. There must be something around here that I can use to get myself out of this quicksand. Why didn't I notice? Why didn't I notice that vine there before? Maybe I can use it to get pull myself out. Kathleho, help me! I just fell into quicksand. Read this. It will give you courage. You're right. This does make me feel better. Welcome back to the Closing Boys and Girls. Have you had a good day? 
I'm so glad that God can help us be brave, and we sure saw that in our skit, didn't we? And the song we sang, Amazing Grace, how beautiful that is. It reminds us that God is with us always. How sweet the sound of knowing he is with us. And so we're ready to put our paw print on our map. Our tracker map for today. So find the next color down where the colors come together. Uh, Mr. Ted will put the map up, up here for us. But before that, here's the question. How does God help you to be brave? What do you do to be brave when you are afraid? We don't want to just sit there and be afraid, right? We want to have action. And God can help us do that. The first thing I thought of is when I am a little nervous or afraid, I like to remember or read something in my Bible. So I wrote the word Bible on my paw print. My paw print is so little, boys and girls, that I had trouble writing on it, but there it is. Ah, or perhaps you could just draw a little picture. Sometimes when I'm afraid and need to think about something and need to be brave to make a good decision, I go walk outside and I look at all the beautiful things that God made and it makes my mind a little quiet. I might see a beautiful flower. So you could draw a little flower on your paw if you want to because that reminds me that Jesus loves me. He made me and he can make me help me make the right decisions in my life. He can make me think good thoughts instead of bad thoughts. Like if somebody said something unkind to me, instead of being mad at them, I could just make them a plate of cookies and take it to them. Sometimes when people are bullies, it's because they feel like nobody likes them. So maybe that God would help me think to do something kind for them so that they would feel light. Or sometimes I could just pray. Pray a simple arrow on your paw print pointing to heaven to remind you that we can talk to Jesus about anything. He cares about everything in our lives. Sometimes I can just say uh, scriptures that make me think about him like Romans 8 28 all things work together for good to those who love the Lord who are called according to his purpose or like Psalm verse 5 verse 11 let all those rejoice who put their trust in you let them ever shout for joy because you defend them let all those who love your name be joyful in you. And I can say, even when things are bothering me, I'm going to be happy because Jesus is with me. In Psalm 23, it says, I will fear no evil for you are with me, God. I love it. I love God's word. I got right back to that, didn't I? So we need to remember if God is for us, no one can stand against us. He is faithful who promised. That's another Bible verse, but right now my mind can't think where that is, but it is a Bible verse. And we need to remember those Bible verses and look them up and read them over and over again. And now it's time for us to be finished today. Please remember that we can be brave because God is with us. He promises to help us. We'll see you again tomorrow.